the answer to that would be yes, there are times when it interferes with the art. There are times, but then I know I have to I have to bring myself back in because then I wouldn't it, it's it's sort of like when you're trying to find words for something and then all of a sudden vocabulary becomes in the way of what you're trying to say, right? Some things you just can't say, and but you still try. So in that way, it does interfere. When when what I want to say transcends the art, that's when it happens. But I, I set it up again. That's one of the reasons why I make sure we come up with a really good title, and that would bring back a bit of us saying, "Okay, Carolyn, what are you trying to do here? Duality." Not some other thing, duality. So just the word brings me back. And then, as, as long as I stay with that, then the process doesn't, it doesn't get in the way. But there is a point where it does get in the way. And that's when I lose the ability to stay with just that word. When duality, because you know that word, any word, it's just pointing you towards something. It's not the thing, right? Any word is just pointing you. So it's not the thing. So I gotta come back, come back. So when it comes to, so for me, the beeswax, it's the most versatile, the most versatile for me. It can create. This is the same beeswax as this, but look how different they are. Look how different I got it to look. This soft and this hard, you know, just by the color, just, just by how I applied it. So it's really my imagination, and the beeswax can do a lot more. Look. Here, this, this looks like porcelain or some kind of ceramic, right? So, I mean, this down here really looks like, like water. I can bring what I want to bring. It's just great. I, I, I haven't found another medium that can do as much. I, I've made other medium do what I want it to do, but not like this, not like this. I read in your bio that you lived in the Zen temple. Yes. Yeah, how I long, did. How long was that? That was in, let's see, um, right after high school. Oh, after yeah. high school, maybe a year after high school, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I went to, um, I didn't understand actually how to apply to college exactly because my parents were, you know, they didn't know. So I went to a school called the, the, the School for Social Research in Manhattan, and they had a class called um, Buddhism, Zen and Buddhism or something. So I said, okay, that sounds good. I'm going to take that class. And the very first day of that class, the teacher said, okay, we're going to go on a field trip to a Zen temple. So after class, I said, do I have to wait till the end of the class? This sounds like really cool. Can you give me the address so I can check it out? I said, oh, sure. So I go there, and I went into the temple. I swear, it was like I, I had been there before. It felt like home. It was an honest thing. And so about a month later, I announced to my mother, who I was, I was still 19. Mom, I'm going to go live in the Zen temple. <laughs> it was in Manhattan on like 23rd Street. And my mother knows she says, okay, go ahead. <laughs> no. And I did. So I stayed there for about six months. And it was a very wonderful experience. Very wonderful. It was a Korean Zen temple. And so I stayed a student. I, I was living in and out after a while. I did leave. You know, I, I told her, I'm going to be a, a, a Zen a, a Buddhist nun. No, no, first I told her I want to be a nun. She says, oh, great, be a nun. I want to be a Buddhist nun. Oh. <laughs> she didn't like that. <laughs> so, um, anyway, but it was a great experience. And so throughout the years from then until maybe, maybe five,
five years ago and had Zen practice. But now I, my practice is everywhere. Even this is practice for me. So you guys like that heart, 